do well until it wasn't politically viable anymore. So I have very little sympathy for all this. I'm kind of, uh, you know, watching it with my popcorn box uh, like the rest of the Republicans. But they have no one to blame but themselves for constructing a charade around Joe Biden that he was up to this. He never was. The American people found out about it, and that's part of why I think Harris lost. Jasmine, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders says Democrats have abandoned the working class, something Pelosi took issue with in this new interview that she gave. Just how split are Democrats on this, and what are the competing schools of thought about the future of the party? Yeah, well, I think Democrats are incredibly split on this. In that interview with the New York Times, uh, Pelosi said, while I respect Bernie Sanders, I don't respect that opinion. Um, and she said basically that Bernie has never won nationally, which I think is a fair point. But the fact is, is that Democrats on both sides, if you're uh, a center left or if you're far left, feel that the part, the messaging of the party is not uh, what is impacting the people. It's not uh, recognizing the folks who are struggling economically, recognizing the folks who are struggling with what's happening on the border. And so they feel that maybe some of them feel that there's not uh, enough attention paid to the working class, uh, that too much attention is paid to uh, higher educated people, uh, that too much attention is not paid to the base of voters. I reported a lot about the fact that uh, the black politi political class was concerned about the way that the vice president's campaign was spending money and the fact that they weren't spending money, not just with the black political class, but that they weren't spending enough money on actually attracting black voters. The same with Latino voters. And obviously we saw that kind of come to roost in the exit polls. And so I think that there's thoughts about they, they are not just uh, not talking to people based on race or gender, but certainly not talking to people based on class and the differences in their educational experience, the differences in what they do. And so I think that the folks who I've been talking to in the last 48, 72 hours really say that the Democratic Party should burn it all down and think about reimagining itself and who it aims to reach out to and the messages that they try to use to reach those voters. Let me get Maria to react to that. Go ahead, Maria. I think there's a lot of truth to that. There, there's no question that the Democratic Party needs to go back to our roots. We have historically been the party that understands uh, organically and authentically and connects with the issues and the struggles and everything that the working class and the middle class go through in this country. And that's what we need to get back to. I think it was not so much an issue of policies, and this is where I think the Vice President Harris did well, and perhaps the timing issue was the issue. Uh, but I also think organization and the ways that we communicated. The Republican Party ran circles around us in terms of the infrastructure that they put together from the moment that Joe Biden became president, in terms of the grassroots, in terms of the far right wing media, the podcast, the social influencers that they uh, invested in, invested millions in them, gave them money, gave them content, gave them platforms. That all resonated and that all grew right under our nose. And we had no idea until it happened that we were so far behind in terms of how to communicate with key demographics in this country that did include working class voters. So I think all of that has got to be part of our postmortem, part of our analysis to figure out messaging. Yes, how do we better message what I believe is our true values and our policies that are the ones that reflect and connect with the working class. We just need to do it in a way where that actually communicates where they are and how they are and listens to them as opposed to making them listen to us. Scott, I want you to weigh in as well. What do you think? Well, I think if you look at the results of this election and conclude that our policies are really popular, we just don't talk about them well, you're way off track. I mean, I... Now, going forward, I also have this theory as to why Shapiro and Newsom didn't run. I really do feel, and this goes back to um, when Biden was still the nominee, uh, and I think... Uh, the appeal of Fox News, something like that, Newsom appeared. And he was asked about his, you know, his ambitions. Does he want to be a leader? And he literally said, Biden is the candidate and that will be it. And I just have a feeling somebody somewhere thought, we are going to save Shapiro and we're going to save Newsom for the future. Now, Harris had no choice. She's VP. It was like collateral Unfortunately, she was what you would call political collateral damage. It was a gamble. It was an absolute gamble. There's an argument I did see earlier that perhaps um, you know, Biden should have just been a one-term president and gone you know, for a replacement a lot earlier. But that's all. It doesn't really matter. It's happened now. 
right? And where the Democrats are, the Democrats have to understand they're not finished as a political party, right? That is so important because it's not like, oh no, it's all gone. They have a future. All political parties come and go. Some do get decimated. That is not the situation. They also hold some key states. New York, Democrat, okay? California, Democrat. They also won some states uh, in Congress and in the Senate. So you have to take, and by the way, they've got some great politicians still there. I mentioned Buttigieg, Hakeem Jeffries, AOC. There's a lot of really, um, the guy in Florida, whose name I could never think of, Jared Mushkoff and the other guy who's there, I can't think of, I wish I could, but there are some really, really good politicians who are Democrats, right? Who also understand how to play the game. That feeling, that's all it is, it's a feeling. And I'm not going to, maybe I'll repeat it myself, but I just think that feeling some people do have and probably had where they probably know what uh, Trump's like. The feeling of annoyance and frustration, it's going to get difficult. It's a bit like you can go to an airport. Every airport has a place you can stand. The plane comes over, the plane could kill you because it gets very loud and very low. You survive, yeah? Maybe if you're a pigeon, you may get caught or something like that, but generally you survive, even though it's really loud and rough. That feeling you may have now, frustration. Think of another feeling. People who don't have that frustration, it's like, you know, they've, they've got their bills coming in and they're in that voting moment. That's all they've really got to give them a chance. Obama tapped into that, I hope. They saw Trump. Forget all of the things we know about him. He ticked something that gave them hope, gave them a feeling, right? You can bring in all your slebs to do your rallies and all of that sort of stuff, but it comes down to that feeling. What is the thing that sits in their brain when they go to vote? And I can guarantee you, it probably isn't the commercials. Might be a little bit. Probably isn't Fox News. Might be a little bit. But I'll tell you one thing it is. Jeez, my bills are expensive. And I think the Elon Musk thing is quite good because they look around, oh, I wish I could afford a Tesla. These are little things like that, but politicians, unfortunately, can detach themselves. Yes, they knock on the door when they need your vote, but they should really be knocking every single day. You build up a local community respect from now. And I'll repeat myself again. The Dems have New York. They've got California, right? It's not all bad. They've got some young, great politicians. Maxwell Frost, Jared Muscovich. Brilliant people now with a bit of experience. AOC, Dan Goldman. You see, it's difficult. You get the feeling and you use these. Most politicians have got two of them. Listen. Sorry, I nearly forgot. There was one more thing I wanted to say. Um, the DOJ, uh, the incumbent president, will soon be able to get his grubby hands on the DOJ. Right? Is that a big problem? And... Does Merrick Garland bear any responsibility for what's happened over the last four years? Should Merrick Garland have acted quicker with regard to investigating Trump? And should Jack Smith have investigated everything going on faster? And what happens now? Because there is that thought, and I've not said all about feelings, but there is that thought. I'd love to know your views in the comment section below. Is the DOJ about to be politicized? Will the incumbent president used the DOJ to go for his enemies. Now that, that's a serious question, which I would love your thoughts, because I'm an outsider looking in. What is, we use the word feeling. What is your feeling about how the DOJ is going to be moving forward? Should it be a bit like the Fed, where it's above politics, where the law, oh, the law controls the law, okay, I'm gone.